JJ. Hi, Desiree. Welcome. Very honored to be with all of you today, and we honor what Trish just said about the Divine Feminine and the Cosmic Christ. Desiree and I published a major work years ago on Coptic text called the Pista Sophia, which essentially said the same thing. The Divine Feminine has to come through our hearts, minds, and spirits before the fullness of the Cosmic Christ is understood. And you will be showing a PowerPoint, so feel free to sh allow us to share our screen. Thank you. All right, cool. Yeah, so Ariel, do a bio, and then you guys can take it away. Absolutely, yes. I'm honored to introduce you, so I want my moment to do that. So <laughs> we're welcoming Drs. JJ and Desiree Hurtak, who are the founders of the Academy for Future Science, an international NGO. They're social scientists and futurists. Dr. J.J. Hertog is also a specialist in remote sensing and space law. He has authored 20 books, one of which he, he, um, he shared that they did together, including his bestseller, The Keys of Enoch, uh, that has sold over 100,000 copies in 25 languages. Dr. Hertog's together have conducted extensive archaeological studies in Egypt and were two of the principal discoverers in 1997 of the tomb of Osiris on the Giza Plateau. They have also worked in the pyramids of both Mexico and Egypt doing GPR or ground penetrating radar and acoustic sound tests. They are research directors also of the Great Pyramid of Giza Research Association and some of their research is reported in their book titled Giza's Industrial Complex, co-authored with James Brown. They have written 10 books together, including The Over Self Awakening, published by the Academy for Future Science, which is also well known for its music and video presentations directed by Dr. Sertak, making them the holders of 14 gold and silver medal film awards for their work in bringing science and art together in the media. And I've had the pleasure of viewing one of those um, to date, and it's phenomenal. So, welcome, uh, Drs. JJ and Desiree Hertak. Thank you, Ariel. It's a pleasure to really work with you. And of course, Neil is a great friend. And we're so honored with Florida Mayo and uh, Mandahi, a true spiritual brother and yes, sister. As yes, you yes. may or may not know, Desiree and I are honorary chiefs of the Shabanti peoples in Brazil. And we've worked with the indigenous people for over 45 years, honoring their heritage. And so our presentation today brings together the Judeo-Christian traditions with the indigenous worldwide in terms of the greater temple of understanding. Well, we're going to start with our screen share, if that's OK. And uh, I'm going to have also a sound share. I'm going to go back for just a second. So I hope everyone can see this. Let me get it on to PowerPoint. The formal title is The World Grid, which is really a metaphor for the energy system of our human body. You know, our body is a human tabernacle of sound, sacred geometry, and higher wisdom. And that tabernacle is illustrated, we believe, in the World Temple's sacred areas and pyramids that we've investigated with the best technology available, one of which is ground penetrating radar, the other remote sensing technology from airplanes using radar, and also the use of musical acoustics. This has been our privilege, and as a composer, as well as a social scientist, we have brought together all of these educational tools to re-examine really the world grid as a blueprint of the human body that has manifested itself in the earth chakras or energy points. Right, so you see us here in Turkey actually, and most people don't even realize, this is actually a pyramid behind that is all made of small stones, so they can't even get inside of it. And many, we'll say thousands of years, since the probably the construction of it they've put up certain statues so some of these pyramids are extremely old again what we're talking about today is going to be the world pyramid grid system which includes egypt india mexico and south america and uh let's just get on with but, that. well we begin with antiochus dog in eastern turkey with actually the area that was connected also with the story of the flood noah's ark etc but what we have found are these amazing faces that are on top of the mountain of stone that has a certain unique aspect of faces, uh, human-like avatars, but also a type of eagle face energy form. Again, the reality is that there is a transhuman collection of avatars on one of the pyramidal mountains of East Turkey that is telling us something about the 
history of civilization. So let's take a look at something from The Keys of Enoch. You mentioned Dr. Hertek's initial book, which he actually wrote based on a divine experience, a Merkaba experience he had in 1973. And he was shown that there are like a grid system throughout the planet. He actually has two different maps in the book. In addition to this one that you're seeing, there's another one. But this is really talking about time warp areas around the planet. And what we believe is the fact that in addition to the network itself, that the ancient ones, and we're going to use some met mantras and meditation during this entire session, that they knew these time warp areas existed and that they actually built temples around them. So the temples that you're going to be seeing today are not just happenstance because a bunch of people live there. There's something about the energy behind all of these temples. So what do we see in the grid? We see a collection of energy contact points which we believe and this has been validated by indigenous elders are the portals of ascension the places of contact with the cosmic forces we would call the cosmic cultures that our astronauts have talked about in recent times we believe we're at that dynamic moment when the temple of man in stone is reaching the temple of the human family in sacred geometry of the higher world and I know this is part of who we are. We're picking up on this. We're plugging in to different realities. Uh, we are not just physical beings just sitting here separate. We're actually energized and connecting, and we would say even multidimensional beings that are connecting on all levels of reality. So the temples are not just for Japanese tourists with their cameras. The temples are living examples of the chakras or what the ancient writers in the New Testament called the seven seals. And there on the far left of the screen, you see the vibratory matrix that Russian scholars have examined in terms of the paraphysical frequencies. On the right, you see an illustration of Mother Earth as a big energy plug, the vision of Nikola Tesla, who recognized that our planet is an illustration of a much larger energy system of the cosmic vacuum or plenum and this is important to understand also so when we go into these temples or even create our own inner temple that we are actually interacting with these grid energy points around us and of course most famous and probably the one of the few places that we've done a lot of the work we, mexico and egypt have been our key places even though we've gone all over the world is the giza plateau we're standing upon but beneath this is something even greater than the great pyramids of Giza, Egypt, there's a vast underground hydraulic system that we've been privileged to explore. And this would allow us to understand the energy alternatives the Egyptians were able to draw upon. Right, and so you're looking, you will say, to my left on the picture there is the Great Pyramid, it has the top cut off for those that aren't familiar, and then the middle pyramid and the smaller pyramid, but it, all of them, and in between that, not quite where we're standing, but further back, is the Tomb of Osiris, which is 100 feet down. I'm not showing you pictures of that today because of our time, but basically, you know, it's part of the energy network of the entire complex. Some so Osiris brings the music to the planet. And this is very important as we begin to experience this presentation. There is a music of the universe, a music of the spheres that runs through our vibratory system. And only by attunement with this vibratory frequency can we truly explore these sacred areas. The sacred grid comes alive as music fills our microtubules. And the energy field of our body and through intonation and expressions that are sacred becomes then a temple, a tabernacle, a vehicle in itself that takes us into a different level of experience. Right, so what we're gonna be doing today with some sounds and vibrations is similar to what Osiris did. Actually, in his greatest teaching, we're told in the ancient Egyptian, he went out around the world, and as Dr. Tang mentioned, sang and taught music and sound frequencies to the planet. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We're kind of taking on that. And this is seen also in some of the ancient Egyptian, uh, we'll say, wall, paintings and uh, depictions. And there we see Horus with the initiate, but Rick, look very carefully at the nose and the vibrations of the hand movements or the modulations there in, in the hieroglyph. It shows that there is a teaching of breathings. An actual book of breathings has been found in my discussion with uh, one of my professors, Otto Schaden, 
great experts in Upper Egypt, he acknowledged the fact that the hieroglyphs have to come alive through breathing or prana. The sacred words are mantras that were so important in India, in China, in Egypt, of course, represent a higher oral history of vibration that's been lost in the intellectual history of the West. And so it's the restoration, the language of light and breathings that is the basic preparation each of us must make if we are to walk through these doorways of the temples into the multidimensional temple of life itself, capital L. And when we've done that, really the light energy has appeared. Here's uh, close to the Osiris temple in Middle Egypt is Dr. Hertak standing under the key pillars of light. And you will hear some of the sounds that we use in the Hebrew, the Egyptian, the Aramaic, even the Coptic. These were sounds precious found in the Pista Sophia, the lost teaching of the Christ figure. It is through the breathing of the sounds that the temple opens its, where its chambers, its portals of ascension. And of course, we've using these sounds actually have had, we'll say orbs appear in different places. In particular, this is uh, myself standing in the king's chamber after doing some of these meditations. And you can see the sacredness of the orbs that are there. And this has happened, of course, in many, many places. And shortly, we're going to begin this uh, recording that we've made in the chambers. And uh, please, Ariel or Neil, if it's not coming through. Well, let, let us, us listen, know. first of all, to the demonstration, the silent demonstration of the sacred geometry within the orb. If you look at it under magnification, there is a geometry within a geometry within a geometry. This corresponds to the sacred shields that I experienced with the great master teacher Enoch in a higher dimensional experience. And so when we sang the ancient Hebrew Egyptian names of the divine, these orbs appeared precisely as geometric text. It's also important to note that we were able to get permission from the Egyptian authorities to bring very sophisticated computers into the king's chambers, where we identify the fact that the breathing techniques and the singing techniques in the king's coffer match the sounds of the human heartbeat per minute, which is illustrating in granite red that we are part of the reddish part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The breathing of the voice inside the king's chamber is an illustration of the human race embodied in the coffer itself. So in a sense, the king's chamber, the Great Pyramid represents the central chakra for all the other chakras or temples of the world during this present cycle. So let me know if the sound does not come out and if not, we'll just do it verbally. But uh, one more slide actually on this. And this is important to see the energy that we were talking about. And this is from actually Russian research. They didn't really go to the pyramid, but they created the same geometries. And it's really electromagnetic properties of the Great Pyramid. So you can see these energy fields. They use radio waves, use electromagnetic waves that are connected with uh, radio waves. And you can see the power that is inherent in this. So when we play this next picture, you're gonna be hearing sound vibrations recorded in the King's Chamber and the resonant vibrations that's there. And it's really, I have to say, more of a masculine vibration than a feminine vibration. In the range of F, F sharp. And what we see here in terms of the coloring text is very similar to what is in the first plate or picture of the Book of Knowledge Keys of Enoch, which is the multicolor aspect of the capstone. Until we see the multicolor aspect of the pyramid as a beacon of light, the Bible in stone, the blueprint of a higher physics and a higher mathematics, the human race cannot understand how the Great Pyramid is a cipher for all pyramidal temples representing the heartbeat of the human race. So this is a two minute clip. I'm not sure if I can hear it. So that's why I'm saying this. Let's listen. Again, it actually gives you also undertones so low that it puts your mind into a type of alpha state. Oh, Oh, 
vibration of O C O Sal O Cirus 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 O C O both men and female voices join. Osiris, the guide who brings forth the music of the spirits, is also recognized as an illustration of resurrection the realm of the dead.
being the masculine or we're having a problem with sound okay we're not getting yeah, yeah. okay let me turn off my screen share for a minute maybe turn that off completely okay hold on i see if i can stop sharing you're stop sharing okay let me get down to this to completely take it off that's right yeah go ahead can you hear me so check your microphone so you have the microphone selected. No sound coming through. Just uh, stay here, everybody, get this sorted out in a couple of minutes. Neil, you're muted. I think it's just me now. Check, check. Can you hear me? All right, you're, I can't hear you anymore. I heard you and then it went. Yeah, extremely strange, everybody. All three of our microphones and everything's going kind of weird right now. So just give a second. Just give us a moment. Um, Ariel, can you check your speakers? to see, I mean, to your, your microphone settings, make sure it's the right mic. Still can't hear you, Ariel. Um, Desiree, can you unmute yourself? Let's see if it works. I got it, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. And we're just gonna screen share without any sound, but hopefully you did get that sound frequency from- Oh, we got it, we got it. It was just a little too loud, so we couldn't hear you when yeah. you were speaking over it. Right, no, it was supposed to turn off actually. Okay, all right, okay. so you can you can take it away again then. Okay, great. So we were doing the Osio Sa. Let's, let's do that one more time. I think you probably didn't get that. Let me, uh, from now on, we're just gonna be doing it with all the attendees without any background music. So we're gonna try this again. This is connected with- The name Osiris or Osiris, and then we bring together both male and female voice seven times for the seven seals. Now, this is important. When we do this, we think of the constellations that were represented in Egypt, which is the mirror of the heavens. And so it's not just the temples of understanding, it's the temples of participation, as we see, as it were, our eyes, like the star shafts, going to the heavens, reflecting the light, bringing the light down, the greater light, into the human heart, and then rebroadcasting it. O Sio Sausiris, 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 O Sio Sausiris. And as I was saying that the keys of Enoch in key 108 verse 11 talks about the alignment. Osiris is connected with Orion. This is historical mythology, but it's the place where the Pharaoh was supposed to go when he left the planet. His soul, that is. And it says during previous keys of Enoch tell us from 1973 during previous geomagnetic cycles the north star shaft of the Great Pyramid originally pointed towards the circumpolar star of Alpha Deconis and the south star shaft pointed towards the Taurus Orion. Constellations, Constellation. plural. So it's interesting to see this. And also, if you look, the Queen's Chamber points to Sirius, Sirius, the uh, dog star. So you have, 
but actually it's always considered also feminine. So you have the masculine energy connected with the king's chamber, the feminine energy connected with Sirius, the star constellation. And also if you look at the uh, other side, the north side, Alpha Draconis, this is also something the Mayans understood. And thank uh, Mindahi for talking earlier today. Really, they had their whole cosmology connected as well with the north and the south. Just so like let's the look at this also scientifically. The three stars in the belt of Orion in Arabic, Mintaka, Anantak, Analam, represent a distance of some 1,300 light years to 1,400 light years. That is a vast distance to be right on target, spot on in scientific optical systems and geometries. You're talking about a super scientific civilization that was influenced either by what the Egyptians called the region of Insak, the imperishable star gods, or a genetic superior race of engineers that were able to engineer hydraulic systems under the pyramids, as well as showing, shall we say, remarkable relationships with three major constellations. And so now let us try this mantra, which is more of the feminine aspect. It's Sekhmet Nephthys. Now Sekhmet is the cat goddess. She was all over Egypt. She was very, very powerful. And she actually had a very loving but powerful nature. And Nephthys was the daughter of Geb and Nut. And as you look at this picture from the keys of Enoch, Nut is the blue figure around the top. She is really the body of the heavens. The and, mother of the sky. And Geb is that of the earth. So it's the two coming together, which you see here. And I'll do this. We'll do it just like a mantra. And again, everyone, because you're all muted, just do it any way you'd like. No one else is hearing you. Just join me. Thank you. And we'll just do it. We'll do it seven times. Sometimes Segment <laughs> Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. Segment Nephthys. It's a long vibration. So as you begin to intone, as you prepare yourself, feel the energy rush through all seven chakras. As we see in the picture, cosmogram, there's two star ports or chambers open up. The soul is guided in the ascension process in the center. The color triangles represent the triangulation of what is called the higher mind, the higher wisdom, the higher understanding. And then you see segments on one side and you see then the initiate receiving the knowledge of the higher star realms. And really these places are chambers of initiation. Uh, there's something that we just did recently for Gaia TV. And this man said when he was in the chamber, actually the walls fell away and he saw stars. Well, strange enough, you know, we'll say back in 2000, uh, uh, say seven, I was in the chamber of the Great Pyramid, the King's Chamber, and the stars fell away. I'm uh, sorry, the walls fell away and you saw stars. And another friend of mine three years later had the same experience. So this is what happens to the energy focus in these sacred realms. And that's why it's so important to hear the sounds. I know maybe it, it had a little bit of a problem with your sound system, but basically you heard the sounds of the vibrations inside the four walls. And actually some of the sounds actually knock out some of the telecommissions systems. <laughs> We've had very unusual experiences in our work wall on the worldwide level of some of the energy mantras actually cause a circuitry, shall we say discharge or a circuitry fallout. So we see here now this wonderful picture of the initiate being led by Horus or Heru Ur to a higher state of consciousness. So I believe this is our final one for the Egyptian, but it's so important because really it is the center, the Middle East is the center of our modern Western culture. And these sound frequencies are, according to the Keys of Enoch, one of the, Egyptian is one of the five sacred languages around the planet, even though it's not spoken of today, the vibrations still bring in higher consciousness fields. So- No, we see here, how Horus is taking the hand of the initiate and actually lowering it, pointing to the knees. Actually, it's the apron that is the pyramidal shape or triangular shaped apron that shows the lower body is in the geometries of the sacred pyramid. 
In the Kabbalistic or mystical tradition, we would call this the lower trinitization process. And so let me say this and join me again with the powers of Heru Or. And Or is important. We're going to use Or a couple of times because Or is also Hebrew and it stands for light. So, you know, this is a very powerful vibration. It means the sonship principle of light coming forth to initiate the one who seeks to be initiated. The famous scholar of the 19th century, Franz Delitzsch, who was of Jewish background, said that most of the Psalms come out of Egypt and influenced by the Egyptian metaphors. So let us see how these two work together, the Ur in the Egyptian and the Ur or Or in the Hebrew, the Heru Ur meaning the sonship or the training that is given to the initiate to realize that we are elevating through breath and breathing from the common light to the superluminal light. Heru three times because we realize sometimes Zoom tries to compensate for the sounds that are a bit abnormal. And we it's don't just, want to cause problems with the sound communication. I may try to adjust my speakers here. <laughs> anyway. We can blow out the speakers as we did in Egypt. Hmm. So again, this is very delicate. Uh, and this is why the use of the trumpets and the horns and the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi text also tells the practitioners to be very careful because the soundscape does change as your body goes into a higher state of vibration. So we just want to say a few other ancient places we've been to, which I think should be understood in terms of the world grid, and that is the pyramids of Bosnia. And uh, really, it's amazing. There's technically about three pyramids in this area. And even though you can't go underneath or into those pyramids as of yet, there's tunnels all around it, which are extremely ancient. So and when we, when we were in these tunnels with Dr. Sam, using the Hebrew, Egyptian, Aramaic mantra, spheres of blue light appeared. So it could not be explained. So you see now a sky view of one of the central Bosnian pyramids. So he's claiming it's 26,000 years old. And that's very, very possible because we've worked with other places of the world, which are at least 12,000, if not 25,000 years of age. And uh, we're actually going to be doing a talk with him in Poland in uh, towards uh, the end of September. Again, his model is not accepted by European archaeologists. So please understand that we're looking at this from the sounds of acoustical physics, the relationship of these temples in relationship to various star constellations. Another place we've been is, as Dr. mentioned, also Turkey. And this is Gobekli Tempe. And we're they've only uncovered about 10 percent of what's there and you can see it's like a circular structure and at the center of the circular structure are these very interesting t so when the german archaeologist um klaus schmidt was there he said that this goes back at least twelve thousand years maybe even more fifteen thousand years this is debatable but the t-shaped monoliths are very important because as you can see the fine detail represents figures from a different zodiac or Maserat system. And what was most interesting is that they were actually put down by hand, covered with stones. So, who, so whoever lived there at the time and used it for a ritual knew that they needed to cover it up for a while. And until this time, and we do think this is an important time that we're all living in, there'll be a lot of changes going on on the planet environmentally, uh, various other uh, factors will come into play like we'll have the pandemic, but this is a key time that we're all here right now. And part of that key time is to activate the grid points. So this is an ecological center. We found within the Lobeki Tepe actual evidences of different levels of agriculture. So it's a time capsule for agriculture, for sociology, for temple building, and for astronomy all in one place. But let's go back to a minute. We just showed you Egypt. 
And if you go straight down from Egypt, which we've flown many times, actually, you come to South Africa. And we want to just say, you know, this is part of that grid structure that's there. We also found a giant footprint in South Africa that we'll show you at another time. But for a moment, we worked, and the reason we went there initially was we were working very closely with Credo Mutua. Who the just great Zulu shaman and scholar pictured on the right, who incidentally mentioned when we did the film with him in the 1980s, there would be the high possibility of biological warfare in the first part of the 21st century. Lo and behold, we are in what some call a situation of biological warfare, the misuse of medicine. But he also recognized that there would be coming of help from the stars. And this is very important because Credo himself was in Egypt. And as we have seen here in our work in our archaeological sites, both in Zimbabwe as well as South Africa, there is an alignment directly with Egypt. Egypt is really the focal point of the heartbeat, the musical soundscape of the human figure in Egypt, going in one direction to Gobekli Tepe in the region of ancient Armenia. And on the other side, it drops down straight to the area of South Africa, to the region that uh, others now recognize do also have alignments with the constellation right, Orion. Like Adam's calendar and also even the Table Mountain. In this the is the work of Michael Thullinger. So let me just say, as Trish McKinnon just mentioned before we came on, it's important that these areas, because a lot of them also have conflicts around them. I mean, we just mentioned the Middle East. Now we're in South Africa. Currently, there's some major conflict. So let's put some energy when we do some of the mantras that we'll be doing towards the healing. The compassion, the love that we must feel. Each of these temples, if you look at it very carefully, represents the human initiation into unity, the human initiation into collective consciousness, the human initiation into the cosmic family. We would say in the language of the mystical traditions of the Coptic and the Syrian traditions, the cosmic Christ manifests himself in the time of planetary change. When the seals are broken, when trouble seems to be on all sides, people turn to God, to the divine ascension process. And so this is a picture of Adam's calendar. And if you go straight out from here, actually Michael Tillinger also believes that it's connected with the Orion constellation, which can literally come down across this hillside. Just um, east of Johannesburg. Right, and we've been there, we've measured, there's several other places called the crawls, which are circular stone, where you, there's no door openings, it's just really circular stone so areas. So beside uh, our picture, there are the heel stones, there are the basic stones that show the threefold arrangement and alignment with the Ryan. So very, very important, but also what you see there goes to the north, and the Another more... spoke goes to the, the area of Stonehenge, also connected with, according to the keys of Enoch, with Orion. According to the keys, uh, free scientists from Egypt were instrumental in inspiring uh, the uh, builders of various geomagnetic structures and one of which, of course, was Stonehenge. And we're sad to say, unless it was the ancestors of the Celts and the Druids, uh, they are now putting Stonehenge back at least three to 5,000 before Christ. So maybe five to 6,000 years ago. Certainly some of the stones, the post holes that are around there go back that far. So it's really something that is quite amazing. In our future publications, we'll show you the mathematical relationships between Stonehenge and Egypt. Very profound, suggesting that the Celtic peoples came from Central Asia, like most European tribes, and went through the Middle East, picked up the knowledge, and that was passed on. And it's interesting that even though you can find crop circles everywhere on the planet now, basically they still are coming around Avery and Stonehenge. So this is definitely another grid point of the world. Uh, Dr. Tech and I were actually in this one in 2008. It's the uh, crop circle that shows pi, and it really does work if you can see it very closely. Each little division is another aspect of the sacred mathematics of pi. So very, very interesting on that. 
for those of you who watch Crop Circles, this is a new one that just came out in 2021. And we feel that it has to do with sound frequency vibrations that we've been talking about. According to Joe Hawkins, author of Stonehenge Decoded, it does have to do with music. This is why we had exceptional work with him behind the scenes. And this spot is why also a great uh, scholar by the name of Hans Yenny connected with Cymatics. What it, we're showing here, because the bottom line is it's not just geometry, it's sound. It's not just sound, it's geometry. So even when you sing, you're creating geometric vibrations that actually can affect your cells of your body. This is something, of course, Emoto talked about. But basically, these things are appearing in sacred areas. So these the are world. sound geometries they go with the sacred language or the musical mantras that are central to each of the sacred areas of the world grid. As we begin to enchone each of these areas of the world grid collectively and humanistically, we open up the chakras fully and completely to work together. So let's try this mantra. I won't do it too loud because I know actually, unfortunately, Zoom does not like to go over a certain frequency. It's like the bass line in the music context of topologies that are now representing musical modalities. So you can see this uh, crop circle from 1996. If you look in the background, you see Stonehenge, the foreground, you see this amazing spiral, uh, sacred geometry, perhaps the phi uh, geometry crop circle. So we're going to use this mantra. Uritone, which is the Hebrew. And I'm going to enchone it. No, Uri tone Uri 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 Ur. So it's right. a whole patterning sequence, actually. There's five vibrations. So feel together. the Uri tone on the place where you're standing. Feel the Uri 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 reach up through your body. And then we get to the mind, the mind's eye. Feel the Ur, the light that is pulsating that goes forth. And, and thus recognize yourself really as a pillar of light. Realize yourself as a temple of understanding that's opening each of these temples throughout the world through the soundscape of breathing, of rejoicing, of greater love, of greater unity. And then we're going to speed it up. So we're not going to do it too loudly at first. We're just going to do it, and then we're going to speed it up so it goes faster. Uri 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 ur. Uri 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 ur. Uri 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 ur. Uri 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 ur. The vibration of Uri means now the centering of the light, the opening of the spheres of light. In the context of what we would call in modern science at Stanford Research Institute, the Uri Geller effect of bending forks and spoons with the power of Uri, the sound of light. This is in a text that I composed, never published, called The Work of the B'nai Or, The Sons and Daughters of Light, where we meet each other in a higher dimensional frequency. So now let's go to another place of sound. And it's also on the grid point. This is Tikal, Guatemala. And it actually means the city of sound. And for those of you who have been there, you know that someone could be standing down where you see at the very base, and another person can be at the very top. And if I'm just talking in normal words, you actually hear that vibration. Now, years ago, and actually the 70s, when we were there doing some sound testing, we were sponsored by the Henry Belk Foundation in North Carolina, and uh, believe it or not, as we began to intone the ancient Hebrew Aramaic mantras, a, every expression we made at the top had a corresponding light discharge that would take place. And then when Dr. Dag was really doing it, and I wasn't singing at the time, there was a female voice that came in that wasn't copying him. It was actually hitting different notes, but in harmony. It was creating a female harmony with his voice. So this that music was, was recorded and turned over to various European musicologists, one of which was the maestro, Sela Vadaci, Romanian conductor and master musician, who with other musicians realized that this was a paraphysical soundscape that was activated in Tikal, the city of sound, 
at the right frequency by using the right mantras and breathing techniques. We're going to share this with you in actual film study in the future. Fortunately, we were able to capture the lightning bolts as they discharged, allowing the pyramids to vibrate together. So if we go a little bit further north from Tikal, we have actually an ancient pyramid uh, grid structure in the uh, Keys of Enoch book. Well, actually, we can probably show you that. And it goes from Tikal to Chichen Itza. And from Chichen Itza, it actually then goes to another area most people are not familiar with. I'll just hold it up. I know it's a little hard to see, but you can uh, see catch the triangle. That. So yeah, Palenque in one place. I'll, I'll actually unstop the Chichen screen Itza, sharing for a second. Yucatan Peninsula. Okay, you see and it. then at the bottom, Kalamakuyu, or the ancient word for Guatemala City, at the bottom right. So again, this is a demonstration of harmonize in an area which we know will be one of the contact areas for a higher or ultra terrestrial intelligence. And actually, I changed the sound setting, uh, Neil, so that might help us in the, I had something that wasn't. Are we still being heard? On. Yeah, no, it didn't get back on. Just, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, so we, it might be better for the mantras now. So we'll just see what happens. Let me go back to this. So we want to do the Hunav coup, which we did actually, uh, with Alan Steinfeld, who um, is a good friend with uh, Portal to Ascension. Uh, we Which were means there, the Supreme One. We were there at the 2020 uh, place, right at the place of uh, Chichen Itza with the native indigenous peoples. Even Trish McKenna was there. Yeah. <laughs> so we acknowledge the fact that this is a family of light, love, and wisdom that's being drawn together. And as we energize around this remarkable temple, the vibration of Hunapku. Again, portals of light manifested themselves. We have this on film. Why is this happening? We believe these are precursors to a higher language that we will be singing and using as planetary humanity makes contact with the star nations. We're saying this in a very humble way because this is something that is just done by the tourists. It has to be done by each of you who take on the responsibility of being servants of the humanity that is being gathered. Hunabku, Hunabku, Hunabku. because our time is short. And awesome. there we are pictured at Tula with the amazing statues representing what some believe beings from a higher dimension with headpieces, but also chest pieces like the ancient Urim and Tumim mentioned in the ancient scriptures with sacred stones were placed where vibrations of the human heart allowed them to understand the representatives from other worlds. And as many of you know, basically, we feel that these sites were not only places of the ancient wisdom, but they were also sites where contact had been. And so just south of Tula and Mexico City is an area called Tepetzlan. And there was this vehicle that was seen many times by a young man named Carlos Diaz. So I just want to add that to the whole information of the world grid that this whole area from Tula to uh, Tijuana, which we're not showing right now, over to Puebla is known as the root of the UFOs because basically so many have been seen there. This is a plasma ship. It's not a physical technology. It's a plasma technology analyzed by our colleagues at the University of Mexico City and in Germany. And we see these so-called reddish portals. So this is what our friend and colleague Carlos Diaz stepped through. Again, a humble man, having only in his home the picture of Christ on the kitchen wall, recognized in humility that there was a higher purpose of his contact story. And one of the places that they actually took him was underground caves where he saw the art of the Mayans. This is something he directly said to us. Now, of course, we want to throw in a little bit about the U.S., so one of the things, one of the places we've been is the Cahokia Mounds. We're going to do this very quickly. 
you can see how large it is. This was actually just east of St. Louis, legally in the state of Illinois. But anyone who's in Missouri or Illinois, I highly recommend you go there. It also has a little kind of circle uh, that was done for the major ceremonies. The major is called the Monk's Mound or Hill. And it's laid out very much like the Way of the Dead in Mexico City in Tepotzlan, which means where humans and gods commingle or come together. I'm using this word loosely representing the ultra terrestrial forces of higher intelligence. And we're currently in Sedona, which is not far from Four Corners. And this is the area of the Anastasi. And you can see myself there in one of the ancient Anastasi ruins. And this was really a very big, not only sun, moon alignment, but also stellar alignment, right? Very close to the Four Corners. So if anyone is ever traveling out there, we highly the unique, recommend. The unique distances in this area are just amazing to see how the portals of space and time are covered and calculated by various situations of earth mounds and human architecture over vast distances that serve no normal sociological purpose, but are pointing to a geometry of the heavens that will open and guide the human race at the end of the cycle. Right, and there seems to be ancient roads that go to this place that could that stretch something like 200 miles long. And this is what's seen by radar from a space. So we believe that the Mexican people and the US people were in uh, dialogue in sharing many of their wisdoms and knowledges from back and forth for each other. So let's try a ancient expression that we believe is part of the vibration of the ancient uh, elders from around here, from the it's Mesa also found Verde. in Yucatan as the call to the heavens, a call to the great teacher. It's ironic, but not ironic if you know the earlier migratory patterns of the Paleo-Semitic languages from the Middle East. Mashiach, of course, is the Aramaic for Messiah, the day of the Messiah, and Mashiach, and Mashishi, the coming of the great teacher. And of course, we've talked to elders in fact, I talked to the president of Mexico, Jose Lepos Portillo, back in the 1970s, who felt that this was a manifestation of a being of light that came out of the heavens, Christ-like, that appeared to the natives of the New World as an example of a higher covenant that would be recognized once the world would go through vast changes. I'm going to intone this seven times, and please listen to me. All feel the day of the Messiah is at hand, but also the day of calling on the opening of the heavens is at hand. They go together, east and west, north and south. And the gathering of the 12 tribes or the branches of humanity, we are called into a greater compassion. Yon Mashiach, hey Meshishi. Yon Mashiach, hey Meshishi. Yon Mashiach, hey Mishishi. 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 May the gates and portals be opened. And throughout the world, no matter what our cultural tradition is, through the spiritual language of the sacred names of God and the divine teachers from on high, let us recognize the coming of the cosmic Christ, of the cosmic family, of the cosmic teachers that will bring us together into a higher vibratory understanding of God's word. And so let us move to Machu Picchu very quickly, a very sacred area in South America. But we also like this area right off of Lake Titicaca called Hayumarca. And it's actually a cosmic doorway. So people have stood in that doorway and much like my experience in the King's Chamber, actually felt themselves moving into the stars. So it is a gateway that's used by the- It's like a ritual. keyhole that you go through with the keys of knowledge. So why do some have the experience and others not? They have to open their hearts. They have to use their body as a musical vehicle or vessel of the divine and human form. So we're also been there. This is right around the area of Tiawanaco. Um, in and, Bolivia. And I just want, because we're in a little bit of a rush, we're going to do the Pachamama sacred expression. This is a sacred area 
uh, right and behind. And we express our love for all of those of the Pachamama Alliance. Pachamama, of course, is representing the female aspect of the Earth Mother, but also representing the gateway to the stars. So we see here so, behind the speaker, the gateway that goes to the stars. So this is Tiawanaka by Lake Titicaca. This is a, a Quechua and Aymara language, and it can mean Earth Mother or World Mother. Pachamama. Pachamama. Pachamama, 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 The vibration stays with us and is added to the divine names of the Divine Mother. And of course, we go now to Brazil and to sacred areas where we have worked, we see the Brazilian equivalent of Stonehenge in the north part of Brazil. Right, and so they actually in Brazil, really some of this goes back tens of thousands of years. People don't even realize how old South America is. And, and working with the indigenous children, and this is our work in Mato Grosso and provinces to the south, as we see here, given an honorary stick for leadership by the native elders we represent again the preparation of hands across the ocean the opening of hearts the understanding of what some believe are the eye sockets of these statues at easter island seeing something in the sky that will appear but more importantly the hands below the waist are in a unique position of way exactly the same as we find in Gobekli Tempe in Turkey. So those statues in Gobekli Tempe have the same types of Indian figures. mudras for the Sanskrit tradition. And of course, as we know, India represents also the Earth Mother, the mother of civilization, the womb of the East and the West. So as Dr. Jack says, we travel then from South America across the Pacific to Easter Island, but then continuing on because our time is short, we go to Japan and we've worked in an area called Yanaguni, and this is in our video, in a video. It was mentioned also in the Keys of Enoch in 1973, 20 years before it was officially found by J Japanese underwater explorers. Right, so this is off the real southern part of Japan, um, and it, you can see it's under the water, and we believe that there was an ancient structure under the water which really was at one point above ground, and so it's more ancient than 12,000 years ago. So we work ago. with those of the Scripps Institute of Oceanography in La Jolla, California. We work with uh, Dr. Kumara from the University of Okinawa, various uh, underwater explorers from Australia, from Europe, join with us, and the document called The Temple of Mu is available to express the deeper meaning of the sacred geometries and the positions of temple architecture under the ocean that was once above the water. So we're going into that same cataclysmic change that is now coming. The oceans are going to rise, we are told, by various geologists, oceanographers. What are we going to do? We're going to be able to walk on water. Yes, of course, people will laugh at that. But in a certain way, it's the water within us that will sing. It's the vibration of a higher consciousness of compassion that will bring people together to move to the higher grounds, but also to use responsible engineering for foods, also for ocean farming. There's a way of, as it were, recycling and reclaiming through positive engineering and futurism. So this is our, shall we say, our blessing to all of us today to understand the statues in Thailand, to understand the statues in Burma or Myanmar, to understand the statues all throughout the Far East that was once part of what some believe, like Dr. Oppenheimer at the Oxford University, the Eden, E-D-E, and the Eden, or the Garden of Eden of the East. We are simply humans waking up in a vast and awesome universe, realizing we can sing, we can create, we can share, if we understand that we are vibratory beings. And that's the last part of intellectualism and science and anthropology. No, we must move from the formalism into the dance of the divine is represented by these statues that come alive 
when we begin to understand the higher meanings and purpose. And it's very important to realize that really we become the higher vibration within ourselves. And so these sacred names, you don't have to, of course, go there or even look at a picture to use them. You are part of them and they are part of you. When As we you... see in this marvelous picture in the area yeah. of the sacred mountains of the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Jains, of the Far East. And so let us use the vibration of Poa, the clear light, as we envision this great monument up in the high parts of the Himalayas, in the travels of the prophets and the pilgrims. So let us say together, Poa, 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 Poa. tops of the world let the light cascade in all directions in the sacred himalayas let the light be a crowning light and let us recognize in the tree of life the coming together of the clear light with the poa energy and mount kailash then awakens with the vibrations of kuan yin kuan yin is the divine mother of compassion who is everywhere putting out her thousand hands to help all of humanity. Let us say this in a vibration. I'll do it and build in time and space in sound and frequencies. The eyes, the hands all represent the multidimensionality of who we really are. We are multidimensional humans waking up to the next chapter of the book of life. Kuan Yin, 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 Kuan Yin. The ejaculation or the projection of light opens the higher areas of the over self body. The connection is made between the over self or the higher self and the human self. The blueprints in stone represent the temple of each of the circulatory systems built within us. The heart circulatory system, the lymphatic circulatory system, the matter energy circulatory system, the music circulatory system, they're all there on the five levels of vibration. And thus at Angkor Wat in Cambodia, we see again the blueprint, the footprint of who we are, a fingerprint of the Elohim. And so we can read that Angkor Wat is really has five peaks from Mount Meru. It wasn't supposed to be only that of the earth. It was to be that of the heavens. It's the mythical God place, supposedly, um, but also the Axis Mundi. So like the Egyptian Great Pyramid, it is the Axis Mundi of the greater place of the earth and heaven connecting together. And there's also a moat that surrounds the sacred temple representing the cosmic oceans of life. And this we discovered under the Giza plateau when we found the temple of Osiris, it was surrounded by a moat. And so also we journey then from Mount Kailash through Angkor Wat to India. And one of the key places is the Mahabodhi temple in Bodh Gaya. And this is where Buddha reached enlightenment under the we'll say the many Bodhi tree by the, the reflection uh moment that is recorded in the sacred sutras when he as an intellectual began to reflect he reached the moment of enlightenment whereas he began to see and here others would agree the sacred temple of creation within and without and so buddha means in sanskrit enlightened one and we extend this also to the enlightened ones of all traditions they come to realize that it's the human body that is simply the garment of clothes that we momentarily put on from the divine over self. But going from the Buddha temple to the Hindu temple of, requires levels of teaching of Lord Ranganatha, the supreme God connected with Maha Vishnu in southern India. And we see this kind of five story temple. We believe we actually have five, five bodies, the electromagnetic, the epikinetic, the Eka, many relativities, the inner body of Gamatria, 
and the outer body of superluminal light or Zohar, these five bodies, they are principal to the Kabbalistic mystical tradition of Judaism, Christianity, and the Sufi tradition, as well as it expressed in the Sanskrit teachings of India and the Far East. So what are we saying as we go beyond the lower concepts of rivalry and separation into the higher traditions of sacred geometry, of sacred language, through breathing of the heart, through the soul of the divine, we ask that the divine, most high God in his mercy, allow us to be humble servants and brothers and sisters of all those who take the sacred path of service. So doing just the Sanskrit, the Om, Shanti, 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 Om. We do Om at the beginning and at the end, three Shantis in the middle. Please join us in this meditation. Om Shanti 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 Om 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 Seven times for the seven seals and the triplet of Shantis again shows the knowledge of this trinity was known in the east long before the Near East. So as we close this meditation, we join hearts and hands around the world, and we recognize that there are higher levels of divinity beyond the masters. There are the avatars, maha avatars, the greater teachers and guides. And we are now at that rare moment of seeing as it were the gates of space and time open to show us the many pathways, but it's important at the top to understand the divine love the divine wisdom and the divine compassion that must be there in music and vibration. If any of this is to be meaningful, we must be the temple of understanding, yeah. the temple of the cosmic Christ. Right, and so each of these temples are not just for your own personal transformation, even though that is important, it's for a global transformation. So join with me three times as we do the sacred expression, may peace prevail on earth. May, may peace, peace prevail, prevail on earth. earth. May, May peace prevail, prevail on earth. earth. May, May peace prevail, prevail on earth. earth. And we often say, and in the heavens, because we don't think it's just the earth, but also the heavens. And see yourself as being the celebration of the world soul. We'll do this very quickly because we're trying to close for Freddie Silva to come on, but Om Om Uma. Which is the Sanskrit, this, the, the Semitic, Near Eastern Egyptian Hebrew, Uma, of course, the Arabic, for the understanding as well as the Tibetan of the world soul. Om Am Uma. 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 Desiree's augmentation of the work of William Blake. We see ourselves dancing in the, shall we say, the other geometric positions of our consciousness as it makes contact with the angelic realm. And so as you see the ancient places, also see the angelic guidance that is there. Most of them have been preserved by the higher forces of light. It is not just us, but when we align with them, we strengthen their abilities to work for peace for the planet. Let us be one with the angelic realm as we see here in the cosmograms of our book, the 72 sacred names of the most high, we see at the bottom of the screen, the vibratory concentric circles of where we are. But then as we energize, the concentric circles move upwards. We see our body move as a pillar of light and make contact with the cosmic hierarchies. This uh, I personally experienced in singing the names of God in 1973. This is the most remarkable teaching that we pass on to all of you. It is the music of the divine that makes us dance that has illustrated the work of Brahms, of Beethoven, of Mozart, the great maestros to understand the house of many mansions, the Christ that lives in the vibration of the higher creation. But I just want to emphasize in this meditation that reaching within is the same as reaching without. You don't have to travel to these places. You can remote view from the inside of you, visualize that, put your energy out there for peace for the planet, to activate the sacred energy zones at this critical and that time. that is why your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament sense, we are literally the temple, the embodiment of a much greater temple of creation. And you align with the stars, with the angelic forces, and you align with the powers of protection. This is Archangel Michael, not with the metal sword, but with the sword of light, who's with us at all times in helping us. Greeting helping us with the hand, with the light vibrations, 
with the cosmic greeting, realizing our responsibility as the avant-garde. This is the great spirituality of Alpha and Omega coming together to understand the historic Jesus and the cosmic Christ, the historic Buddha. JJ Desiree? Yeah. And the greater we, creation. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. We do need to wrap up any yeah. minute now, so maybe Final within the next couple of minutes. Cosmogram is before <laughs> each of us. It shows the faces of the divine feminine of all great traditions. At the top of the screen, the sacred names of the Most High. And cosmic Christ coming down with the avenue or the vehicle of the dove representing Pachalum. Pachamama, but also La Paloma. So we thank uh, Neil and Ariel for this opportunity. Just saying we do have CDs available of some of this ancient music and our books and powers. So thank you we so thank much. Thank you all for the cosmic opportunity to share ecumenical love and fellowship. I'll stop the screen share and get back to you guys. And may the portal of ascension work continue. <laughs> we thank you, Neil. We thank all of you. Ariel, we thank all of you. And we apologize if our voices were too strong that uh, knocked out the technology. <laughs> no, that was, that was perfect. Thank you guys so much. The the sound and traveling all over the world with you. I feel that it was just like a really encompassing event where you were like taking us to all these sites and just encompassing it all. Just great presentation. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you later. Bye.